what truth do you choose to present when you're, when you're cutting a documentary. And how do you incorporate that into an emotional story? It was just the easiest, most succinct way to do it. And this kicked my ass, but I, this was one of the best jobs I ever had. I was the lead editor on this film. At some point, we cut it in half, and I and Algernon Tunsil took the back half, and I took the front half, and we traded scenes and worked together. But um, the the beginning was my responsibility, and I, I, I hope nobody minds me cursing. This kicked my ass. All right. The, it was so hard for us to get the beginning of this film to work. The, the thing we knew was important was that you understand how this, this small group of people, there's some saying about a, a dedicated group of people is the only thing that can make change, right? The, about how this small group of people changed the world for us. I mean, Stanley Nelson and I were both born in the, in the 50s, and so we sort of grew up in the civil rights movement and in the kind of changes that were taking place. And so we knew that that was hugely important, but we also wanted to, to hear something that we didn't, we don't always hear. And so we wanted to hear, you know, you always, you hear from black people what racism does, what it did to us and what it did to our family members, but you don't hear from white people what racism does, right? And so we wanted to hear from white folks. We wanted to say, say okay, well, wh what was this like for you, right? What was this structure like for you? Ellison writes about the invisible man. They were invisible women to me. I can't believe I couldn't see them. I don't know where my head or heart was. I don't know where my parents' heads and hearts were or my teachers. I never heard it once from the pulpit on a Sunday. We were blind to the reality of racism uh, and afraid, I guess, of change. And, and, I, and it's possible that it was that desire that kept it from working. I think three quarters of what's in this is in the final film, but the biggest difference is that we started with the riders. At some point we realized that the most important thing for you to, to know was, was that these people were dedicated into doing this and that they weren't going to stop, right? Uh, um, and so we ended up starting the film with that reading from the, from the application forms. I wish to apply for acceptance as a participant in Corps Freedom Ride, 1961. To travel via bus from Washington, D.C. to New Orleans, Louisiana, and to test and challenge segregated facilities on I know route. that you are primarily interested in persons who are one, young, two, southern, and three, colored. We have never had the latter two qualifications and have not had the first for many years. I have sat secure in my suburban home and talked to my suburban friends about the whole situation but I have done nothing. I feel it is the deed that must support the ideal. I understand that I shall be participating in a nonviolent protest against racial against discrimination, racial discrimination that, arrest that arrests a personal injury to me might result. And that ended up being the way in. Uh, a lot of that history stuff is there. Uh, John Siegenthaler's experience is there. The, you know, we don't serve niggers here, that's all. That stuff is all there, but we begin in another place, and that was one of the things that, that made it work. I mean, one of the things that, I mean, you, you know, you talk about how it's frustrating and yet you love it, and, it's, and sometimes it's both of those things at the same time, right? I mean, this kicked my ass, but I, this was one of the best jobs I ever had. Mm -hmm. 